Hello to all physics enthusiasts and experimentalists. This is Andrei Shketnikov, and today we will talk about one of the transformer paradoxes. And this paradox will be as follows. We will take a core with a primary winding, and imagine that this core is surrounded by a certain loop. We'll depict this loop here. A short-circuited one, but with a large loop. And in this paradox, we will drive the magnetic permeability of the core to infinity. Make it larger and larger gradually. Well then, on one hand, an alternating magnetic flux will pass through this loop. And according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which underlies the operation of the transformer, an induced EMF will be generated in this loop. On the other hand, as M becomes larger and larger, the magnetic flux is concentrated entirely within the core. But how does the wire that is outside the core know that there is a change in the magnetic flux inside the core? What will act on the electrons in this wire? Where will the EMF come from? It seems that it has no source. Well, we will be dealing with this contradiction, this paradox today. And before we examine our paradox, I want to introduce some distinctions between the situations when direct current flows through the coil and accordingly it acts as active resistance R and when alternating current flows through it at a sufficient frequency for the coil to act as inductive resistance OL. Well, let's write that in this situation. The current, which is U divided by R according to Ohm's law, does not change at all when M approaches infinity. When I write here constant, I am specifically reflecting the behavior of the current as M changes. And in this situation, the current is in amplitude now, right? U divided by omega L, L as it approaches infinity, also approaches infinity. And therefore, the amplitude of the current will tend to zero. And the constant by amplitude here will be the magnetic flux, because it must create such an opposing EMF that will balance the external EMF applied to the coil. Well, as for this situation, here naturally, the magnetic flux will indeed also tend to infinity. And we will talk about magnetic fields. Well, I will write out the field H, which is defined by currents but is proportional to them. Does not depend on M at all. Well then, I write here a constant. Essentially, as for the magnetic field B inside the core, it is basically MH. If M tends to infinity, then B essentially tends to infinity. Now, on this side, B in our case, it is essentially advantageous for us to write it as flux, divided by area. Since the flux is constant, the magnetic field B inside the core will not depend on the change in me. And the magnetic field H, which is B divided by M. When M approaches infinity, it approaches zero. And now we can write down the magnitude of the magnetic energy density inside the core for either case. Let's denote it as W small. It is H times B divided by 2, which does not change while B approaches infinity. Thus, the magnetic energy density in this case will tend to infinity. And here we have a completely different situation. The formula is, of course, the same, HB over 2. Now B does not change with the change in mu, while H approaches 0. So here, the density of magnetic energy approaches, I apologize, 0, as mu approaches infinity. Well, we just need to write down. What interests us specifically for our problem, namely, what the magnetic field will be that emerges from the core I will denote it with the letter B with a star. Well, outside we have M1, so B with a star and H with a star are the same. And H with a star will be essentially the same as H inside the core, in essence. That is, it will be a constant value. And this means that when we let M approach infinity, the magnetic field that emerges remains the same essentially the field that the coil creates inside itself 
in the absence of a core. But here we have a different situation. E with a star exists, H with a star exists as H, but H tends to zero. And therefore, the emerging magnetic field in the case of alternating current will tend to zero as it approaches infinity. Indeed, in this limit, there should be no magnetic field left outside, and our paradox only worsens. What creates EMF in the wire that surrounds the core? And now I want to further complicate our reasoning, and for this purpose I will consider a toroidal coil, and let it be bifilar, meaning wound in one direction and then in the other, so that there is definitely no magnetic field outside this coil. And the question arises, if I apply alternating voltage to this coil, an alternating current flows through it, and I enclose it with some loop outside, then according to the law of electromagnetic induction, an induced EMF should be generated in this loop, yet it seems that there is no magnetic field outside. How does the loop know that the magnetic flux is indeed changing exactly there? Inside the coil. And the resolution of this paradox is that when we talked about the falling fields, we considered a stationary or quasi-stationary situation and the proper distribution of fields in space is found using Maxwell's equations, which must be solved in their entirety. I have written down all four equations here, well, outside, in, space, where there is no medium, no charges, and no currents. And I also wrote them down in the CGS system, although I previously wrote in the SI system, to immediately see here 1 over C as the highlighted speed of light, because it is significant in this context. And if these equations are solved, well, this can be done using the method of successive approximations. Alexey and I worked on this a bit and did some things, but I don't want to recount this long story. We will find that outside there is a variable oscillating at the same frequency as the flux oscillating inside the field, which I have denoted here again as B with a star, and compared to the field B that we have inside the core, it is smaller by this coefficient. Here I have the ratio of two lengths. A is the characteristic size of the system, and L is the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave in a vacuum at the frequency at which the transformer operates. Well, let's estimate, I find it convenient to take six centimeters as the characteristic size of the transformer, and then lambda at 50 hertz. This will be six times 10 to the power of eight centimeters. It is 10 to the power of eight times larger. Now the square is 10 to the 16th, which means this field B with asterisk is less than the field inside the core, by 10 to the 16th. And yet it turns out that there is a field outside, and it is the presence of this field that closes the system of equations. I also want to note that the magnetic permeability of the core M is not present at all in these calculations. Well, it is important that it is sufficient for the transformer to operate as a transformer, and then it can be increased, definitely. Nothing will depend on this in these considerations. The magnitude of this field will be the same, and accordingly, the magnitude of the electric field, as we have already said, is determined by the magnetic field flux through the core and the frequency of change, as is usual in these transformer discussions. Well, here I must say a few things. First of all, the overall picture, as I now imagine it. It turns out that the transformer core acts as an emitter of electromagnetic waves. And these waves are captured by the secondary winding. Well, that's true. When we usually talk about waves, we consider them in the far field, far from the antenna. But here everything happens very close to the antenna. Nevertheless, the language of waves provides some understanding. Second. To be honest, this understanding did not come to us with Alexei right away, and it took time to form some kind of picture for ourselves. Quite a lot of time and various discussions, writings, formulas, drawings, and pictures. But we tried to present here what we comprehended for ourselves in a way. And thirdly, the transformer, as it turns out, is quite a complex structure. And so, if there are any more questions, although we seem to have already made a lot of videos, 
If the questions are related to the videos, I will just provide the links. And if new questions arise, then there will be a new discussion. And in general, it is clear that we are moving towards a discussion of energy transmission questions, the pointing vector, and indeed, of course, we have such a video to shoot. And now we are waiting for your comments below, and thank you very much for your attention.